Hello YouTube, this is a quick video to show off exploration in Elite Dangerous of VR. Uh, before I show you, I just want to explain why I enjoy exploration so much in Elite Dangerous. And for that, I'll show you some real world things. I do astronomy in real life, and with this telescope I've taken many photos you can see there. Now, the photo that always got me was this one, and that shows you the Moon uh, alongside M51 Galaxy. Both of them to scale, both taking the same optical train. Uh, the only difference is the Moon is only two light seconds away, whereas M51 is 23 million light years away. And despite the vast difference in distances, it's almost comparable in scale. And that gives you an inkling into how big uh, the actual um, universe uh, actually is. It's just absolutely mind-bogglingly huge. But it's this interest in astronomy that has really fired up, um, I guess, my enthusiasm for exploration and Elite Dangerous. So we are in uh, Elite Dangerous in the, uh, the start screen. Uh, this hangar is absolutely huge and uh, it's not something you get across in a, a 2D screen, but in VR it does look huge. Uh, top right is what I call knobbly knees cam. It's, uh, uh, I guess, the webcam footage from the front of the HTC Vive to show you what I'm seeing in the real world. And uh, hopefully you see a correlation between my real movements and what's going on in uh, virtual reality. So let's wait for this to load. Here I'm in my ASP uh, spacecraft, already landed on a moon, um, on some faraway system. Now down there, the, uh, the the planet, the ground, looks a long way down, sort of about 50 to 100 metres down below me. And again, you can't see that on a 2D screen, but in VR, because you experience real depth, you, you can feel how high up you are. And arching above me is the, uh, uh, the Milky Way, the galaxy. Um, now... We're heading towards the core, which is why it looks a lot brighter and bigger than it is. Here we are, having a, a look around the actual cockpit. So it's a very large cockpit, and again, in VR, you see things one-to-one -one scale. Uh, so you get a real feel for just how big things are. So I guess, where am I? Here we are in the, uh, the galactic navigation screen. Uh, and this is uh, the entire galaxy that we're in. Now, uh, Elite Dangerous models the real galaxy and it uses uh, real-world physics to, to model that galaxy and real-world theories. And it's actually remarkably accurate. Um, uh, everything that I've ever seen uh, in my real hobby of astronomy, you can actually fly to in Elite Dangerous. And it's, it's just really awesome. Uh, so I can do things that you could never really do in real life. Now here we're zooming in to show you where the Earth is, uh, which circles around uh, Sol, and where, where that orange uh, arrow is, so we're quite far into the galaxy. And that took me quite a while just to get there. My ultimate destination is another human bubble around the Colonia space station, which is quite close to the core. But most of the galaxy in Elite Dangerous is completely unexplored and uninhabited, and uh, hence that's why us explorers come in. So, uh, generally speaking, uh, I always land on a, a planet or moon at the end of every uh, play session. And I normally traditionally end that with a, a ride around in the rover, which I'm going to go in now. Uh, we'll show this at the start of the video, uh, because it's easier this way. Now, be warned, uh, if you're new to VR, you might find driving around the rover quite uncomfortable, because it does bounce around a lot especially in low gravity planets. Uh, as I said, I, I don't get motion sick, so I could just drive it around with abandon, but you do need to be careful if you're new to VR. Uh, here I am looking through the turret of the device. It's always weird. You, you feel like you're disembodied watching this real 3D turret directly in front of you move around. It's a really weird feeling. Uh, I guess that's what real weapon systems probably look like in the future. They have a holographic uh, 3D display. So back into the buggy. And uh, what we'll do now, I'll, I'll just uh, drive you around the ship. I normally use the buggy to explore planet service. Uh, you can also collect various samples, which you can use for crafting. There's lots of uh, things you can do with the buggy. But uh, I primarily use it for exploration. So this is uh, my ship. It's um, an ASP Explorer. 
it's uh, it's one of the best ships for exploration. And there you can see the two level cockpit. I actually sit on the top level, the level below I believe is for the navigator. Huge, huge ship. Um, not the biggest in the game, but it, it is pretty large. Uh, and again, you don't see or feel that scale on a 2D screen, whereas in virtual reality you get a full sense of just how large uh, uh, this vessel is. Right, we're now going to uh, dock our buggy back into the, uh, the bay. So I inch it forward very, very slowly so I get it aligned and straight up. And here we go. <coughs> anyway, we're back in the cockpit. So first thing I'm going to do is get the ship off the ground. So we'll activate the, uh, the engines, which you should see now. Here we go. And the initial takeoff in VR, it feels really, really weird watching the ground fall away below you at such a speed. Uh, and I guess if you serve from vertical, that might be a problem, especially with a, with a ship like this, where you can see directly downward. Now, uh, normally, I, I wouldn't recommend going to the galaxy map prior to, to taking off. The reason for that is that uh, when you switch on your um, frame shift drive, it will want to go to the vector that you've got locked in in your nav system and that could be behind the planet and if that's the case it could take ages uh, to get far enough away from the planet. So I always recommend get off the planet first, use the standard escape vector and then once you're away from the planet go to the galaxy map to uh, initialize your route there. It's, it's a much faster way to do it. Now here we're quite fluky in that the um, next star is above the horizon and we can actually uh, hyperspace uh, directly there. Here we go. Hold on to your hats. Uh, the uh, hyperspace or witch space I think it's known in Elite Day just is really well done. You get a real sense of speed when you're flying through this. You see the star at the other end and there we go. The first time you see that where the star comes heading towards you really quickly, it's quite scary because it, it, you can almost feel the mass. Now this is a, a brown dwarf um, which poses a problem for explorers. Uh, the big problem is I can't refuel from it. Um, and in fact in this system there's no other planets there either so there's not a lot for me to do here. Now it feels very important exploration because if you run out of it you're stuck and you only, uh, there's no like load or save per se in, in Elite Dangerous. It, if you're stuck you can the only way out of it is either to destroy your ship or to contact uh, a player group called the Fuel Rats on their forum and has to be rescued which could take some time uh, given the scales and distances involved. So you, you really need to keep an eye on your fuel levels because the last thing you want to be is stranded. Uh, especially given how large this galaxy is and how small the inhabited bubbles are. Alright, here we go. We'll head off to the next uh, star and hopefully there'll be uh, more there to see. But that's a great thing about exploration in that every system presents new sights uh, for you to see and experience and you never quite know what you're going to see. Straight into witch space again. Now in the old days, this used to rotate round as well, but they found too many people in VR were getting motion sick, so they kind of stabilised it a bit. Another star. Now these stars we're seeing here are actually quite small. Um, our sun, in comparison, is a lot, lot larger. Um, but I guess these are the, the type of stars that appear in this uh, part of the galaxy. Now right there I've done a uh, system scan to see what's in the system and I, I tend to lock up the star as well so I can scan that whilst I look at the system map to see what we've picked up. Uh, and I'm basically looking for objects of interest. And this system seems to have a whole bunch of rings, planets and an asteroid field and all these planets seem to have similar gas compositions you can tell by the colour and, uh, and many moons but every system's different. Uh, this one has one star. Um, in real life, single star systems are actually the minority. Most uh, star systems have many stars in them. Um, so now what we're going to do, we're going to approach uh, the star to uh, refuel. 
Now, um, for my system, the trick is, for my ship, the trick is to fly so that <coughs> my fuel flows at around 70 a second, uh, and that way the temperature doesn't increase too much. Because uh, if your temperature goes over 100%, you start to take damage. And of course, being out of the human bubble, any damage you take is very difficult to repair. Now, I, I do have a repair kit in my ship, but the uh, the problem is that it doesn't repair the hull, it only repair uh, auxiliary systems. So you, you really need to be careful when you're out exploring. If you get too close to that star, you'll come out of um, uh, of the frame shift drive and you'll take a, a lot of damage. So you, you do need to be careful. Uh, and again, you don't want to overheat. Uh, now those figures that I was mentioning, they're directly ahead on the HUD. Uh, the upper one is the uh, temperature, and the lower one's my fuel flow. Now the maximum fuel flow that this current vessel could take is uh, around 75. You can hear the temperature alarm going off there. And generally speaking, as long as you don't go over 100, you're fine. But I will warn you that as soon as you leave the star, the temperature continues to rise, so you want to leave it before you get to 100, otherwise you'll take damage. So, so, so try and leave vicinity, I, I, I tend to leave around sort of 95%-ish or uh, whenever my f uh, fuel tanks are full. But it is vitally important to keep your fuel tanks full because you never know what fuel is going to be available on your trip. You, know, you don't want to end up stranded because like I say that would be the absolute worst case. Uh, and this particular ship here is worth quite a lot of money and I wouldn't want to lose that in the game. Although I am insured. And that's another tip in Elite Dangerous, always make sure that you have enough money to not only buy your ship but enough money to pay for the insurance so that way if you lose your ship you can quite easily get it back. So I'm going to pull away let the uh, ship cool down. Now well, one of the great things about exploration is you can just have a look around and experience sights and sounds. Now th these two ring planets actually circling each other you can tell by the um, grey line above them. So what I'll do we'll fly towards one of the ring systems just to show you what they look like um, uh, and graphically uh, it's it's really really well done and again uh, Elite Dangerous uses a system called I believe it's called the Stellar Forge uh, and that Stellar Forge system models the entire galaxy using all the latest uh, knowledge uh, in, in physics so it's what you see are, are, are pretty realistic and very plausible based on chemical compositions uh, mass and all sorts of other things so here we are approaching uh, the ring planet uh, and again in VR you get this massive sense of scale simply because unlike a, a flat 2D screen you're seeing things in one to one scale uh, and whilst that ring planet looks quite tiny to you on this video to me it's looking absolutely ginormous it, it has real gravitas and mass to it it's uh, and it's almost like well to all intents and purposes, I'm there. I'm really there in space, in a ship, looking at a real planet. Uh, and it's, it's views like this that sometimes make me wonder whether the memories you get from VR games, whether uh, they're legitimate, I guess, compared to real life memories. Uh, I suspect they might be to a certain extent, because these are experiences, they're real experiences I've had, even though they're computer generated. Uh, I've flown through these rings, I've flown by this planet. And to me, these experiences are as real as anything in reality because VR makes it that way. So here we are, we're quite close to the rings now. You can see the individual um, rocks. Now, um, the rings on this particular planet, they look like standard rocks. So others have different compositions. Some will be um, icy. Uh, others will have um, a, a gas surrounding them. Uh, it, it all uh, varies. That's my um, afterburners kicking in. And what we'll do, we'll fly through the ring system. And again, the sense of scale here is just awesome. You, just, you need to be in VR to experience this. It's, it's like the Matrix. You need to see it for yourself. I mean, those those rocky bodies, some of them look huge, like larger than many blocks of flats that I see. They're absolutely ginormous. And the planet in the background, it, it's very very difficult to describe its scale, it's just ginormous. So we are flying through uh, the ring system. Um, now with the right equipment you can actually mine uh, the asteroids, uh, although 
my particular ship isn't equipped for mining, so uh, we're, we're going to fly right through. So, so how many people can say they've flown through the, the rings of a ring planet? Not many, I suspect. And whilst this is computer generated and artificial, because it's in virtual reality, it, it just feels and looks totally real. There's a real solidness to everything, a real sense of scale. Uh, the, the kind of things you just, well, you just don't get on a 2D screen. It, it's it's why I fly Elite Dangerous exclusively in VR. I, I just won't fly it on a 2D screen because, well, it's just so flat. Uh, here we're getting our afterburners in um, so that we can kick in our um, frame shift drive. The, the, the frame shift drive, uh, it needs to be away from gravity wells to operate. Uh, and the, the nearer to gravity well it is, the, uh, the slower the performance. Uh, so the further away you are from uh, masses like planets and stars, the faster the frame shift drive gets. You can get to some really scary velocities when you're away from objects. So here we are. I mean, I, I, I look down at that planet and the sheer sense of solidness is, is just amazing. And this is why I explore for these uh, various sites. Uh, and I say every planet's different and elite dangerous. Different colours, different compositions, di uh, different sizes of ring. It's it's just a, it's an amazing game for exploration. Now right, we're off to our uh, next star system. Frame shift drives charging up for it. And here we go. I, I just love Whip Space. Uh, it's so you get a real sense of speed with VR on this. Here we are approaching the star. Again, we'll do uh, my usual uh, system scan, which you can hear there, and uh, I'll also scan the, uh, the star. Now, when you're out of the human bubble, uh, a lot of um, stars and planets um, haven't been explored. Uh, in fact, there's nothing very interesting in this system, so we'll probably uh, uh, zip off straight away. And in Elite Dangerous, if, if you scan a, a star or planet, and you're the first to do it, and you're the first to send that, bait, that data back to um, a base, so you've got to land at a base of some sort, uh, not only do you get paid for it, but your name appears against that planet as a discoverer. And it's, it's a really good feeling to know that you've discovered so many... Uh, systems and planets in the game. Now here I'm, I'm skimming the star, getting out of fuel. Now, normally I'd charge up to 100% fuel before flying to the next destination, um, but for the purposes of this video we're going to head straight on. At my normal speeds I, I can normally do around uh, a thousand light years in about two hours of real time, I'm assuming I don't do um, too much looking around. Uh, but given that like Colonia, right now I'm about 16,000 light years from it, and that's going to take me an awful long time to get there. And it really does give you a great sense of scale for just how large a galaxy is. Even though we're, we're travelling at uh, much faster than the speed of light here, it still takes a long time. Here we are in the next system. Again, we're doing our system scan. Kind of always amazing to see what am I going to get. You, you never quite know what each system is going to give you in terms of uh, planets and so forth. It's always interesting. Now here we are in a binary system. Ah, and I look at down there. That looks like it might be a water world or even an Earth-like planet. It hasn't been explored by anyone. And the thing is, if I was to scan that and send that data back, I'd get a lot of money for it, and my name would appear by that planet. So we'll probably head there uh, and and have a look at it. We might as well start uh, scanning the star as well whilst we're, we're at it uh, and refueling. At the moment you can only refuel from bases and from various stars. Not all stars, there's only certain types of stars you can uh, refuel from. Um, I'm guessing there might be more options in the future, but I, I don't know. They're continuously expanding the game. Now you kind of have to be careful um, when you're flying between binary star systems because some are so wide apart that it can take a lot of physical time to fly, real time to fly between the um, uh, 
different stars of a system. Uh, a prime example is Alpha Centauri. If you ever get a mission there, just don't do it because it could take literally two or three hours just to fly uh, between the two stars. Other star systems could be very close, like the, the stars almost touching, uh, and they are amazing sights in VR. You're looking at these really huge objects in close proximity. It's, 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 it's really, really daunting to fly that close. So here we are, we're going to fly to the other side of, the, of this particular binary star system in order to um, try and uh, scan this planet. Now, that galaxy image that you see there, the amazing thing is, it's not... No, it is a picture, but it's, it's a dynamically generated image in that it changes as you move through the galaxy. Now, in uh, human space uh, near Earth, it isn't that wide or that bright. Uh, and I suspect as I get a lot closer to the core, it will take up more and more of the sky. I mean, I've already noticed that in this part of um, the galaxy, the, the stars are a lot denser. The great thing is, every star I can see, every nebula I can see, every dot in that galaxy that I can see, I can fly to. They're, they're all real items uh, generated by Stellar Forge. It's not a pretty picture. I can actually go there in the ship if I, I, I take enough time to fly there. I say the great thing for me, because my hobby is astronomy and I, I know my way around the night sky really well, uh, the ability to, to fly to all these places that I've seen in my telescope and know very well, it, it's just outstanding. That's, for me, one of the best parts of Elite Dangerous. It's almost like having your own planetarium on steroids, a planetarium that you can actually fly through and explore. Uh, so it, really really good and it gives you a great sense for the true scale of things uh, something you, you don't get from reading dry textbooks uh, and I find myself staring for hours out of the window of the spacecraft looking at the, the sheer beauty of the stars it's, it's really really well done really really well done uh, and again in, in VR the, the sense of scale of everything it's just mind, uh, completely mind boggling, it really is. If you don't own a VR system, you know someone that does, try and get them to give you a demo because uh, I, I think it will change your view on it. Because I, I personally think it's a technology that's here to stay and when it matures, uh, everybody will be using it, I suspect. So we've still got a, a ways to go. You can already see the uh, the other star uh, coming into view there. Now, uh, as we approach the other star, the uh, the gravity will start to slow um, the frame shift drive down. That and the fact that I'm actually pulling back on the throttle a bit because. Uh, last thing you want to do is go flying into a planet because that will end your emission pretty damn quickly so uh, you, you do need a little bit of care when you're flying around because these ships are really powerful you get a great sense of their power when you see these stars and other large stellar bodies go whizzing by and they're right now I'm taking it easy because I don't want to go crashing into anything there you go we're picking up the scan Let's see what it is. Hopefully it'll be an Earth-like, but judging by the image on my scanner there, I'm guessing it'll be a water world. But either way, they're worth a lot of money. Ah, water world. Okay. Not as high paying as uh, an Earth-like, but nevertheless, I should get a fair bit of money for that. So let's uh, drive the ship closer and, and take a, a, a closer look at it. Now, uh, right now in Elite Dangerous, you can't uh, land on planets or atmospheres, which is a shame. Uh, they are adding that to the game, uh, but it's not in just yet. So all you can really do is just fly nearby to them. But even so, the, the sensor scale of that planet, though it's nowhere near as large as the ring planet I saw earlier, it still looks and feels huge. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go to the, uh, the moon around uh, the planet nearest to that star. That moon is landable, it's an airless world. And that's uh, where we'll end today's uh, little flight of exploration. But like I say, if you have any sense of wondering, you like to see new sights and sounds, uh, beautiful sights and sounds, then I highly recommend um, 
explorationally dangerous. Uh, me, I'm a, a bit of an introvert and I kind of like being away from civilization and I'm way away from civilization here. I've got, uh, the chances of running into another player out here are pretty much zero. Uh, you have to go back into the human space, what we call the bubble, uh, uh, to actually run into people. It's one of the reasons why you don't want to cock up out here because you're so far away from anything you could lose your ship, which is, uh, given the amount of money I've invested in it, it's something I don't really want to do. So we are uh, moving rapidly towards the other planet. Those uh, yellow lines that you see, they're from the HUD and they uh, basically show you the orbits, the planets, uh, which is very handy because some of the fast uh, moving ones, you, you need to track them as you're moving towards them and make sure you're headed the right way. So here goes our scan on the moon. That's now done. And of course, if I get to uh, back to civilized space again and deliver my data, I'll have my name alongside that moon and everything else that I've scanned as uh, the person that discovered it. We're now uh, scanning the main uh, planet, the moon circling. What we'll do, we'll, we'll take a flyby of that planet and then we'll head towards the moon and we'll land on it. But Elite Dangerous rendering of um, uh, the galaxy, like I say, it's there's no other game that, that does it like this. There we are. Again, the planet's looking huge. It's possibly the most accurate representation of, of our galaxy in any game. Uh, and there are many other games that might look better, but their um, ideas of space are completely made up, whereas this is modelled very closely on, on um, our real galaxy. I could fly to Earth. I could visit all the planets in the solar system. It's that well modelled, but we're obviously we're very far away from our flight now, so we're not going to be doing that in this video. We'll take a long time to fly back. So anyway, let's go and uh, land on this planet, or well, on this moon, sorry. So now this one looks very similar to the one I, I just left. This is a shame because I was hoping to show uh, lots of different um, scenery. So here we go. The, the amount of detail on the ground is surface is really well done as well. But you get a sheer sense uh, again of scale. It's uh, I keep saying scale, but VR is very good at showing you the real scale of things. And I know this is a, a relatively small moon. It's looking huge, and but I feel like I'm a, I'm really high up at the moment. Now tip of the day. Um, this is obviously a very uh, rocky and it's going to be quite difficult to find a landing spot. The easiest way to find a landing spot in these kind of um, uh, places is to fly very low and very slow. And if you do that, you'll find your landing spots. If you fly too fast and very high, you, you probably won't find a landing spot for a long time. You can waste a lot of time flying around. So what we're going to do now, we're going to get as low down as we can. Now once we're low enough, we'll get the landing gear out and we'll just fly around a bit until we find somewhere safe to land. Here I'm uh, activating the downward thrusters. Landing gear is down. There we go. So you get a real sense of how high you are. You, can, you don't really need an altimeter with uh, VR because I can see how high up I am. Again, if, if you suffer from vertical, well, this might not be the game for you because you do get a great sense of height above the ground. Now here we are, we're moving very slowly forward and we're waiting for the HUD display to change to let us know that we can land. And this is absolutely the best way to do it. Fly very low, very slow and look for flattish areas. If you do it any other way, it'll take you a while. There you go. We're, we're heading towards somewhere that might be a good place to land. Here we go, it's gone blue. So let's uh, head down very slowly and get this uh, ship on the ground. Now sometimes with planets like this they're so um, 
are rocky and so uneven that even though it looks like it's a good landing spot as you get near it changes to not being a good landing spot in that case just get the throttle a little inch forward and you might find somewhere else so here it looks like we might get down all the way down you're nearly there very nearly there Touchdown. We're down on the planet surface. Right, hopefully that will give you, um, uh, I guess, an insight into why explore and show you that some of the sites that you can see, and there are many, many more sites to see. Every system is unique, and uh, some of them produce some really startling sights. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, see you later. Bye.